Ready, begin. I'll pick you up. I'll set you down. We'll fall in love if you want to. I'll stay right here. I'll go all the way. Welcome to our uh, second edition of our little fireside chat. And of course, conspicuous by its absence is the uh, fireside. Yep, no fireside. So uh, this is the fireside chat without the fireside. But maybe we'll, you know, rig up a little something here, uh, some fake o thing here next time that'll warm your heart and uh, cause you to feel that you're here with Uncle Terry sitting there by the, by the fireplace. In the, in, the, in the meantime, you just have to use your imagination, you know, maybe brick or stone or whatever and a, a wooden mantle with the intricate carvings in it, a, a log in the fire and a flickering uh, fire going and uh, you forgot to open the, the flue there and uh, the smoke is billowing into the room and everybody's choking and uh, teary-eyed snot coming out. Yeah, forget it. Anyway, we'll, maybe we'll rig up some. I, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. But um, anyway, so so what have you been doing doing with your time as you're, uh, as you're holed up there in your, your little cell trying to, trying to make it work? 
trying to live without going out of your mind. Um, you, you're doing stuff like uh, like we do, like like charades. I hate charades. Or uh, how about these uh, online uh, these little online quizzes that you can take? Those are fun. Those are a lot of fun. You know uh, where you uh, you know you personality test things. You know where you find find out like I did that I'm a, a latent uh, serial killer. Uh, anyway, or or those quizzes where they give you two impossible situations. You got to choose between them. You know. Like the one where uh, you go, it goes something like, uh, would you rather have uh, fingers for toes and toes for fingers or uh, something like uh, have uh, the face of one of your loved ones tattooed over your your face, you know. I, ha I, I actually did that and uh, so uh, I will admit that I am Terry's wife talking to you right now. <laughs> I... I kid. <clears throat> Seriously, uh, uh, as far as this virus goes, uh, uh, my family's uh, hearts and prayers go out to uh, all those who have uh, lost loved ones and friends, and uh, it's so heartbreaking. And uh, and those of you that are uh, facing some financial crisis, you, you're let go at your job or uh, or whatever it may be and uh, uh, you don't know where you're going to get your next paycheck and I believe me, I, I identify with that. I've been through it, which is the key thing. I've been through it and uh, so by grace, we're, we're just hopeful that uh, we'll all get through this thing and however this all cashes out, whatever the world looks like after we come out of it. We'll just uh, take it one day at a time. So hang in there, kids. I know it's tough. Uh, so what have I been doing here at home? Well, uh, it's not really much different than it was uh, prior to the virus. Uh, I continue to uh, record songs for Patreon. And if uh, you're a member of Patreon, uh, thank you very much for your support. If you're not, you might go and check it out. Go to Patreon, check out Terry Scott Taylor. And uh, come and join us. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of songs, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, so the other thing that's happened, you know, we moved here to the Pacific Northwest a couple of years ago, and so, um, you know, uh, our, our life here, uh, uh, we, we, have our, we, we have all of our fam our immediate family living here, um, and, uh, so life here has sort of evolved and, uh, I have emerged as, uh, the undisputed leader of, uh, this sort of, um, I would call my congregation, I guess, my family. Um, and we call this the compound now. And, uh, everyone felt, and, and I, I had a growing, um, uh, sense that, I should begin uh, at times to uh, to don um, uh, s majestic robes and and uh, and and wear some sort of a um, an elaborate kingly priestly aluminum foil type headgear thing with stuff coming out of it, and uh, that's worked out pretty well. And uh, the only thing, the only drawback there is that I have to remind my family members that I am only a man and uh, that they need to quit the genuflecting. They need to get up off the ground and <clears throat> stand tall. So that's, uh, that's what's been happening here. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, getting back to that whole fireplace idea, I could snap my fingers and, and those flunkies would come in here and build one right, right now if I, if I wanted, but uh, we'll let that go for, for a while. Uh, I will say that the solo record, it continues to, to under the circumstances, move along fairly well. Um, uh, this week, we recorded uh, the uh, real strings, violins, cellos, the whole thing, uh, for a number of cuts on the record. And, uh, of course, as you may know, uh, Rob Watson and I collaborated on string arrangements and 
he's an incredible uh, composer and uh, so it's been working out really well and it, it sounds beautiful and it's a real thrill for me because I haven't I haven't used real strings on an on an album for for many years so uh, it's very exciting sounds beautiful um, so we are we are moving along as fast as we can under the circumstances and we're appreciative of, of your guys's patience concerning all that um, last time uh, that uh, that we were together um, I uh, shared uh, one of the things that I that I have been uh, doing in my spare time is of course reading like a lot of you uh, have been doing and uh, love the books and uh, I made a recommendation last time that uh, some of you should uh, if you have re-explore the Narnia Chronicles and uh, how how wonderful it has been for me and I, I continue to read them and um, and uh, get some of the same old thrill that I that I first had when I first encountered these books. Uh, but uh, t for today's chat, um, I want to share this with you. Make this recommendation. Um, I have a, I, I'm a big fan of um, movies, of course, and uh, so uh, I, I love to. I, I particularly love to read accounts of uh, films uh, being made made in the past that were flops. And usually the director, uh, what happens is the director will invite a journalist on the set to, to sort of keep a log and notes and that sort of thing of what's happening on the set. You know, everything from uh, technical problems to uh, personal conflicts uh, between the actor and the director or, or whatever it may be uh, and the choices that go into like the casting that maybe you know, there may be uh, people in the film that were miscast or whatever and what was uh, supposed to be a big blockbuster uh, is a bomb with the critics with the public and the whole thing so those are particularly enjoyable probably because it's fun to see big people um, take a fall because it, it sort of minimizes uh, my uh, my failures. Anyway, um, so, but I don't always like to read about flops. I also like to read about uh, classic films. And uh, one classic film uh, that probably is in my, could be in my top three, I think, is Chinatown. And uh, so a, f a couple of weeks ago, uh, I completed this book by um, Sam Wasson, I believe you pronounce his name, Wason, Wasson. It's called The Big Goodbye, Chinatown and the Last Years of Hollywood. Chinatown being one of my favorite movies of all time. And uh, it's, it, it's behind the scenes of, of, the, uh, of, of the writing of the script and the problems uh, that went awry there and how they were overcome. Um, and uh, the casting of the film and all of it is very, very interesting. Uh, but one of my uh, particularly favorite uh, portions of the book was uh, concerning the musical score of the, of the film. Uh, originally, Roman Polanski, the director of the film, had hired this guy uh, to do the score who, um, Polanski, Polanski wanted to uh, do something that was uh, uh, evoked the, the time period of the film, but he didn't want it to be a cliche. And he wanted something off the beaten path, a little bit eccentric. And he found a guy that he'd heard this guy do, I, I can't remember uh, this particular fellow's name, but he'd done some other scores and Polanski liked his approach. So it's sort of oddball. And so he brought him in, the guy wrote the score, it was recorded and inserted into the film and Polanski loved it. And uh, so the story goes that uh, they decided to uh, have a uh, sort of a private screening, uh, some public uh, uh, people, people from the public there and, and, and the uh, studio execs and that sort of thing and uh, screen it before it was released. 
and uh, they showed the film with this uh, particular score in it. And afterwards, the general uh, consensus was the film didn't work. There were a few that actually hated the film, but the overall impression was that the soundtrack itself was assaulting, intrusive, you know, and uh, nobody liked it. And Polanski still defended it with the studio and tried his best to keep it in the film, but uh, with more studio pressure, he, he finally caved and, uh, and he uh, decided not to use it. Well, he's really in a bind at this point because the film's gonna be released uh, fairly soon. So he, he calls up Jerry Goldsmith, uh, a famous uh, film composer, and he says, uh, I, need you to, I need you to save my film. And uh, Goldsmith says, okay, tell me what's going on. He goes, well, I need you to save my film, but you've got 10 days to do this uh, soundtrack. And uh, Goldsmith took, took on the challenge and came up with this thing in 10 days. And it's one of my all-time favorite uh, film scores. Um, it's it's gorgeous. It's haunting. You know, it's melancholy. It's it's beautiful. And I have it on vinyl, and we we get it out every once in a while and play it. Uh, so I guess that's two recommendations for the book. Again, the Big Goodbye by Sam Wasson, 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 and. Uh, the soundtrack. If you don't have it, pick it up, and uh, you you will uh, you will greatly enjoy it. Um, what else am I going to cover here? Oh yeah, I, I want to say that I do promise that next time we'll get to some of your questions that you've written in, uh, and uh, and uh, that'll be fun here at our in our little fireside chat. So I'd like to end with a. Um, a little number that I, that I wrote, sort of a singing cowboy style thing that I think is fitting as a uh, fond ado to uh, all of you guys out there. I'll put a 10 gallon hat over my devil horns. I'll lasso the sunset and back. Gonna wear it like a uniform They'll say there goes one good man I might fool them for another day Then at the crack of a glorious dawn I'll ride away I'll be riding away the way they say that they love you and they mean it. Or for instance, there's no fences around your dream when you dream it. And the heart in the dark finds a light to redeem it. In the meantime, let me say, God knows I got a ten-gallon hat over my devil horns. I'll last through the sunset and fact. They're gonna wear it like a uniform They'll say there goes one righteous man I'm a fool for another day Then at the crack of a glorious dawn Then at the crack of a glorious dawn Then at the crack of a glorious dawn I'll ride away Till next time, so long, buckaroo.